All right then, so take two. Hopefully this will work this time. Also, I might need to seek a dentist later on. Um, my chip, my uh, I chipped my teeth a little bit though, and, and scratching on my tongue. Oof. Hello, average human. Yep. Okay, so, hey, well, welcome back to my talk corner. I'm Kesha Sakura, and this is take two on uh, um, OBS that started to on, um, give me problems, so that uh, I'm decided to just um, start over. Anyway, hi! Welcome back to my talk corner, and uh, with me, of course, is uh, Edward. Yo. I was in here during the first part, so. <laughs> Well, uh, don't worry, it, it, it no longer exists. Cool. Alright, so, uh, so welcome to episode 2 of my D&D tutorial. And uh, so episode 1, we covered the in ins and outs and how to navigate your uh, your uh, character sheet. Today, we're going to talk about the races. And I thought there wasn't much to cover with the races. Boy, Edward, I was wrong. Well, yeah. I mean, are you talking specifically just about, like... The amount of them, or are you talking about like all the stuff that? Okay, goes so the, okay, so this fancy little thing right here, right? I only got up to dwarf to cover uh, the, the, to make make this all like a fancy thing, you know, be a little extra. Ah, uh, let me show you what, what I have. So I I already covered human, dragonborn, and and dwarf. So here's human. Here's dragonborn. Oh, and here, and here is dwarf. Ooh. Yeah, I can see why you jumped over to uh, Wiki Dot. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so at, at the very stone, uh, uh, that I didn't show off my, my little me, me being fancy on my hard work. Uh, we'll go here for for just the three first races. By the way, which is all covered within the, the player's handbook. So uh, again, if you don't have it, then uh, do pick it up. Or at least at least the PF uh, and, uh, at least the PDFs. Mm. Anyway, so when um, and you probably wondering though what when we create human, where all these, all these stats come from and all these proficiencies. So, for, uh, they all come in two and uh, two locations: the class and, and race. For episode two, we're gonna talk about the races. So first and foremost, um, uh, you know, hold on. Obviously, no, I didn't want to show that. That's my music. I should actually uh, uh, put that over here. Uh, and just me being dumb. There we go. Anyway, so so first of all, so here's a uh, human. Uh, his age is, is actually uh, again average human. Uh, don't stop being unstable. Stop it. What humans or OBS? no OBS again? Actually, no, uh, no, OBS is fine. It's just Twitch being uh, being asked this time. Everybody decided that they were going to get on and stream Elden Ring. I guess. That too. So anyway, so like, uh, first and foremost, though, we have humans. So age-wise, uh, humans are um, a bit average. Um, the they reach maturity around eighteen to twenty one, and they, they can be as old as a uh, hundred or whatever how, how old you want to make your Methuselah, uh, and uh, so uh, depending on, on if you're lit or not. Uh, size categories, yeah. size categories, medium. Um, we get uh, uh we get to size categories and, and after we uh, after the uh, episode four we, or after we talk about the uh, the classes as well, languages. They know common and they can choose on one other language of their choice. Speed is thirty feet, um, and there are two paths you want you, you can take for humans: it's standard humans or variant humans. Standard humans, all their ability scores get increased by, by plus one. Variant humans is you, you choose two of your scores to be a plus one. You, 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 you can choose also choose one skill to be proficient in and also one feat of your choice. So if you still choose to, you can be an ass like Edward and choose Lucky Feet immediately at level 1. Indeed. 
Wait, you can go over custom lineage too, or what? Custom, custom, custom what now? Custom lineage. It was from uh, the the weird Fey festival thing. Do you have that? I don't think it's under. I don't think it's under races, but there's. Oh there's shit! There's also a very human mark of finding. Uh, thanks to Eberron. Yes. I didn't see that. And I'll. I'll and very human mark of hand handling, mark of making, mark of you passage, can, mark of sentinel. You can just mark those as mark of whatever, and they're all just different ones. Tell them to look it up. The oh, they also have humans from the uh, the ones where I got my fishman from. Oh yeah, we'll cover that mixed bag of uh, can uh, mixed bag on uh, uh, full of can of worms later on. Just make your own video about humans. <laughs> no, the, what am I, Runesmith? No, but the humans in D and D are basically like cockroaches. They're I'm everywhere. A... They're annoying. <laughs> I, don't know why, I, 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 don't, I don't know why. When you say that, though, I, I imagine you being being mind flare. <laughs> like these humans are like cockroaches. They're, they're everywhere, annoying. They seem to be good at, at everything. Why? He shakes like two different humans. Why are you both fighters? <laughs> Why are why are there so many human fighters? What is this shit? <laughs> I didn't know about this uh, this mark of uh, mark of everything thanks to Eberron. I should re read Eberron actually. I only got Eberron because 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 of the Warforged stats. Yep, Warforged is pretty cool, but yeah, the all right. So kind of kind of if yeah miffs me a little. So all right, so let's uh take take a quick look uh, on these uh, marks then before we actually go on. So so mark of finding though. So your ability score, your wisdom score gets incre increases by two. It's same with your con, and wait, they're giving humans dark vision. Oh, so the thing about humans with marks. The marks are dragon marks, and they're basically like magic tattoos, essentially. Oh! That uh, kind of level up, sort of, as you go along. But uh, so this... they get different things depending on what mark they have. So yeah, that one has dark vision. Dark I'm not vision. Sure all of them have dark vision, though. You also I got really looked in dragon marks. But... You also got hundreds intuition. Where on uh, so you make make up a perception check or wisdom survival check. You add, add a d4 to your number, uh, finder's mark, you cast hunter's mark, well, with the straight languages, you can also speak goblin. Ooh. Huh. <laughs> also, here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a spells on, 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 on for no, mark, of, mark of fighting spells, if you, if you still choose to be a spellcaster. Because this, this, uh, they actually word this a little too uh, no, wordy. It says, if you have the spellcasting or pack magic class feature, so basically, say if you're a caster. <laughs> but is there a, uh, a trait, uh, uh, a feat you, you can get uh, by leveling up on, uh, that makes you a spellcaster or something? Mm, not by what I can think of of standard definitions. Okay. The only thing I can think of is magic initiate, but that doesn't really give you a spell slot. It just gives you one level, one spell that you can use. Once a day? Once a day. Well, once a long rest. So yeah, once a day. But um, but you can also use your spell slots to satiate that spell. It's basically like getting an extra spell if you're a, you know, a spellcaster. But yeah, the, from the way this looks, it looks like that would not help you at all. You have to have... So, yeah, so basically, it's, this is a, a more, a more quote-unquote, a, um, a, um, a contract or, you know, fine print saying, like, oh... If you're a spellcaster, you get these spells as well. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so here's a spells on, on, uh, for mark, mark of Finding. Then, let's see Mark of hand, uh, Handling. Again, we're, we're going through this on a little fast. Because uh, there's a lot of races to cover. Especially the, uh, um, the quote-unquote non-canon on, uh, um, Magic the Gathering races. Uh, Mark of Handling. So, let's see, your ability, uh, same is, is Wisdom and... And one, one of your choice. Huh. While well, in intuition, whenever you make a wisdom hand, animal handling or intelligence nature check, you can roll d4. Okay, so that's the same thing. It's, a, it's the same as animal handling and nature instead of um, perception and survival. Hmm. Oh, this is more of a... Um, uh, this is literally just on, uh, on uh, you get get to be better with, uh, with animals more. Yeah. 
Apparently, two of the spells from the first level spell one you can cast without using your, uh, well, using spell slots. Well, so it's like magic initiate, except you get two level one spells that you. Can well, I, I, I guess that makes sense. Even though that that seems on a, a redundant, like putting a hat on a hat, I guess it makes sense. So if if you're like a, a non-caster, then uh, you can still use these spells. If yeah. you if you are a caster, then yeah, then 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 it becomes redundant. Or it's like an, it's more like an innate ability than an actual like spell. From the looks of it, except for that, it's also put on the spell. Well, uh, you can also look at look at like a, like say for example, if you're out of spell slots or low one spell slots, you can use this as a trait rather than spell. Yeah. And see, the, the bigger they are, at starting third level, you can target a beast or a monstrosity when you have a, and when you cast animal friendship or speak with animal, provide the creatures. Oh. So. You, Wait, so you can make friends with uh, with monstrosities? Well, if you reach level three, yes. Huh. And I'm assuming it also doesn't use a spell slot because it doesn't say anything about having to burn through a spell slot. It just says starting at level three. No, you we'll, we'll use start the, two, the we'll, two abilities you get. Yeah, so we're basically saying that if you used animal friendship, specifically animal friendship and speak with animals, which is both your spell slots and your 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 trait. Yep. Ah, oh, it's a monstrosity! Hey there, big fella. You wanna be my friend? Okay! <laughs> it sort of sounds like a... I have a character that's kind of like that. That'd be a really good idea to have that. Hmm. But you have to be a human, though. You don't know that. The mark of handling could also be a variant any other race, too. Because the but, whole but thing it's, it's... is that there's different houses or, like, clans... I guess they're more like guilds. Um, but wait, though, you th th just this, this is in them by actually getting the tattoo through birth. Normally, what, what, is that how it works? That comes because that says variant human. Because it's variant human mark of handling, as in it is a human that possesses the mark of handling. Then hold on. Now I don't know if there's other races that have mark of handling, but I know that there's some where the the marks overlap certain races so there's like i think one where there's like gnomes and humans have it um so far no really yeah well sure well so far because i only went through dwarf and half and, uh, and gnomes for all i have to answer is i turn to yahoo well i also have the ebron book Oh, and for those who are confused, um, let me get the picture of the Ebron book. You mean the one with, uh... Wait, do you have the the actual one? Like, the Rising from the Last War? Yeah. Because that one's got Robot Doctor Strange on it. I love that picture. And then uh, there's just like a... I think it's a gnome, or maybe like a halfling with a boomerang. Boop! And... Th 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 there we go. There it is. That's not what I want. Here it is. So this is the, the, the book we're talking about. Eberron Rising from the Last War. I got this usually uh, on, uh, before, on, uh, initially because of uh, the fact that um, it gives up Warforged stats. So, you know, robots. Uh, edition, fifth edition. Here you are. Ah. Oh, here we go. There's one called The Mark of Finding. And half orcs and humans are capable of having it. Let's see, handling. Nope, just humans. Fuck, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, so, I um... mean, if I wanted to, I could do aberrant dragon mark, which is basically you get a dragon mark that just lets you come up with bullshit. Wait, so do, should we even cover cover the marks because and um as racial traits? Um. I mean that's up to you. You're the one running it. I mean you could literally just do like a like a video where you kind of dive into the dragon. Yeah, but the, I want to cover all all the racial traits and that's it in one episode. That, that... Oof, that's not gonna happen. Are you going by just the the? You, you're talking about every race, right? There's like over thirty races. I'm not sure. I don't think that's. Counting I was. The, uh... I was planning to. I was planning. I was initially planning to to skip plane shift. 
Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Even without plane ship, there's like 30 cl there's 30 races. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Ah! 44! Oh, wait. Right, no, 40, 46. Because I wait, didn't. Does that one. I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not counting Plane Shift or Under uh, uh, Arcana. Okay, but what about the two that they released for their. Uh... There, what you call it? I don't think that's on here either. What was it? Um, there was these two uh, supplements that they released. Supplements. As they, um, yeah, supplements are like they're not full books, and they usually cover like one thing. So like portals were originally a supplement, and then you have um, I think they're called the Grung or something. They're like a frog race. Uh, they were in a supplement, and then there's a straight up like ugly fish person race that they. Oh, like a um. I I I about the Lakatha. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, not, those those are I've been made made official. They're in supplements. I don't. They're not under Darkana. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that the, the one and 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 uh, covering the our plane shift ones. Because I'm well, looking at plane shift. It was like, uh, they're a mixed bag. I don't I don't want to mess with. Especially, especially vampires, since uh, uh, the, the only have a, the Dampir, which is the more balanced vampire. Mm. But, hey... Are they more balanced than vampire from Blame Shifts? I've never really looked into that. Well, we'll do it once we get, get, get to Ravenloft. But as of right now, on, uh, we're still on human. Right, so uh, no, well, well, the things we only got to uh, talk about them just a little bit though, because uh, if we go into in depth, then uh, the the racist video itself will, will be like three episodes. Yeah. What were we again? Uh oh, handling. Yeah, so animals and blah blah. Hey, okay, big buddy, you're my friend now. And next up is uh, Mark. Humans get humans get almost everything. Mark of Plier. Mark up making your intelligence gets by increased by two, and uh, on one of your choices be increased by one. You basically uh, can add D four to your Arcana or or your Arsons tools. You can push with Arsons tools of uh, one type of Arsons tools of your choice. Yay, making beer. Yeah. Uh, you also you also learn the mending cantrip. And you can cast a magic weapon spell with this trait. When you do so, the spell lasts for one hour and doesn't require concentration. Ooh. Like, silly fools, I am a demon. You can't hurt me with mundane weapons. Magic, magic weapon. Uh, okay, so let's get to a long, finish long rest, and blah, blah, blah. And here are the spells done for the market making. Behold. Uh -huh. Is it Tensor's Floating Disc at level 1? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Is Tensor's Floating Disc at a level 1 spell? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, hmm. it is. It's a level 1 Conjuration. That's probably why. I never really look at anything in Conjuration. Oh. Uh, next that, that, up is Mark of Passage and um, Mark of Plier. <laughs> God yeah, damn it. Mark of um, uh, Your Dex increased by 2 and 1 out of uh, your choice. Oh, your base walking speed is 35 feet. Ooh, fancy. Uh, you can add D4 to acrobatics. And, um, check involving or maintaining a land ve um, a land vehicle. Mm. So you, you can drive better. Magical, yeah, pass yeah, magical Passage. You can uh, uh, you basically have Misty Step with this trait. What the? Wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dexterity is your spellcasting ability for these spells. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I heard it on the screen. <laughs> it is! What? <laughs> That's I funny! I've never seen that before! That's funny! Never mind, I was gonna say this is a shitty this is a shitty human for a monk, but damn! It might be the best one for monks. <laughs> I just missed the step. Oh, go ahead. Uh... I mean, there is no damage as it come to these spells, though, so, like, I don't know why they even say, like, oh, Dexterity is your fucking modifier for, for this or something. That is true. 
<laughs> but still, look, it's written, it's rules is written, official thing from Wizards of the Coast, dexterity is your penalty question modifier, nobody's like charisma or intelligence, or wisdom, but it's the first time I've seen it as, as, as dexterity. I cast fist. Fist is, is uh, not using strength is my is, uh, my uh, focusing ability. <laughs> that makes no sense. Whatever. Hey, uh, no, read their shit better. Then see. Uh, and now here's the spells you get from the market passage: uh, re retreat, jump, missy step, pass without trace, blink, phantom steed, dimension door, freedom of movement, teleportation circle. Ooh, teleportation circle. Oh, I don't know why this guy uh, uh, feels like the a. Uh, a good base for an, uh, an, an official on uh, a common writer and uh, uh, character. Yeah. Uh, variant human Marco Sentinel. Uh, Call increased by two and wisdom increased by one. Uh, get a d4 to insight or perception. Uh, you can cast shield with this trait. Uh, uh, wisdom is uh huh. Uh, Vision Guardian, once a creature that you can see within five feet of you is hit with an attack, you can use your reaction to swap places with that creature, <laughs> and you are hit by the attack instead. Once you use this trait, you can do so again get a long rest. Oh Wait, no! Why, why does it need, like, a modifier? What? For shield. Isn't shield just, I cast it and it's done? Like. Yeah, same thing, thing with Missy Step. Or in same yeah, thing, that makes no sense! Same what, thing what with, they, um, Magic Weapon. I guess they want. I guess they want to cover all the bases, because you know, there are there are rules lawyers who's like, oh, we're gonna cast a spell. You know, you're not a caster. What's your spellcasting ability? Mm. There, are, there are there are rules lawyers that, 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 that are like that. That sounds more like they're just being pissants. In all honesty, well, a lot of rules lawyers. A lot of rules lawyers are pissants. No, a lot of rule lawyers usually are correct. The ones that go, what is your spellcasting modifier? For a spell that does no damage and needs no modifier is a piss ant. By the way, that's in my opinion. Don't take that as me saying it's fact. That is my opinion. Alright, so the Sentinel, uh huh, and Compelled to Show of Fate. Oh, this is like a, a good, uh, a, a literal tank on uh, build. Mm. But wait, though, hold on. Uh, do, wait, do Paladins get on uh, the spellcasting uh, class feature? Paladins? They I'm should. Sure. Alright, because uh, they're like half casters, aren't they? Yeah, this is actually a good uh, and a supplement for a human paladin. Mm. And next is a uh, plane shift. I, mean, I guess, but I think they get most of these spells, so maybe, maybe not. It's dependent. Oh, uh, well, um, I, I was like, actually, no, yeah, yeah, you're right because the fact that um, human paladins, um, uh, um, they have all their spells. Oh wait, no wait. Uh. Are these the type of spells where you don't need to actually uh, not prepare them? But no, didn't you play a paladin? I do, but the, the thing is, though, on, on uh, paladins and clerics, they have all the spells available to, available to them in the player's handbook and yada 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 yada. But you can't prepare a certain amount per day. Let's see, where's classes at? Why am I blind? There we go. Because uh, so I'm wondering though, if these spells can be can be uh, ready for you without preparing them, then that's a big thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hands, fighting style, spell cursing, modifiers, define smite. Where? Okay, blah blah blah. blah. Spell slots, cast one. Blah blah blah. You prepare the list of paladin spells that are available. You cast choosing from the paladin spell list. When you do, choose a number of paladin spells equal to your charisma modifier plus half your paladin level rounded down. And a lot of the subclasses you get from, from paladin, they give you spells that, which which states that uh, you don't need, need to prepare these. These are already prepared for you. Yeah. So I'm assuming these are the same thing. Mm, maybe. If you have spoken in your past you class feature, these spells and your mark so the spell table are added to spell list. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, never mind. Wait, did, did, Glo they list Glory Paladin as being in both Mythic Odyssey and Tasha's Cauldron? Uh, did they change anything between the two, or is it just literally the same thing? It's probably the same thing, because remember, they have the Goblin stats in both uh, Ravnica and, um, and, uh, Volos. 
Yeah, that is true. Yeah, it doesn't say that there's any difference between them, so they're probably the same thing. They just added it. And the, the rest of the humans, uh, humans and, uh, and, uh, is just uh, from plane ships, so we're going to ignore that uh, hot they bag. They don't matter. <laughs> Alright, so next next up will be on, uh, the Dragonborn. So, let's see, Dragonborns, and, uh, they're adults by the age of 15, and they live up to an, uh, up to an average uh, um, 80 years old. Size category is medium, uh, the speed is about 30 feet. They're, they also have a draconic ancestry. It basically determines on, uh, on the area and your breath weapon. And mind you, these are all, uh, these are all stats, rules is written from the player's handbook. This is before we add uh, Fizzbins and also, it, it, we add Fizzbins or the first guy to load them out uh, in there. Because that, that's not a kind of we're, we're about to uh, tip over. And so languages, you, you actually learn uh, common draconic. And so if you, if you choose the following on the, uh, skill color, which is the black, blue, brass, bronze, or copper, um, your element in that order will be acid, lightning, fire, lightning, and acid, and it'll all go into a line. But if you choose um, gold, green, red, silver, or white, it'll go into a code instead. And respectively, it'll go. It'll be fire, poison, then fire, cold, and cold. Hmm. And the ability scores for the standard Dragonborn in the player's handbook is uh, plus two strength and plus one charisma, and you get resistance uh, according to your skill color. Now let's add the Will of the Mouth Dragons next, which is this book right here. So first, the first the, the, the first one they added in Will of the Mouth though is called the Dragon Blood. You get an an int plus two and charisma plus one. You also get dark vision. I mean, finally, right? <laughs> you only get forceful presence. This means you get advantage with persuasion and intimidation checks per long rest. So you basically, you want to use that that uh, that trait that they go do it one, once per long rest. Next up will be the uh, the, the Ravenite and uh, the Dragonborns. You get uh, the plus two strength, plus two one uh, constitution. Also get dark vision. Also get Vengeful Assault, so per long rest, if you get attacked and get damaged, you can actually attack them back and, uh, and uh, again. Actually, it says per short or long rest. Really? Yeah, you can Did do I? this once per short or long rest. Did I uh, read that wrong? I probably did. In my uh, half-asleep stupor. The Dragon Blood is the one that's just per long rest. This one's short or long rest. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, short or long Dragon rest. Blood. Inferior. Alright then, so next up is Fizzbin's options of, uh, which is that the, the one giant can of worms. That's why I, I, I put the dot 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 there. So let's go with Fizzbin's on that little mixed bag. So for all of them, the ability score increase is always the same. You get either option A or option B. Option A is basically choose two stats, one is plus two, one is plus one. Or option B is you choose three stats and all three are plus one. And so let's start with the chromatic, the, the chromatic uh, the dragonborn, shall we? And so same thing. This, the elements are still the same thing. So black is acid, blue is lightning, yada yada yada. Your breath weapon is. If you're chromatic, though, they made it easier. So every every chromatic dragonborn will always gonna be have the same breath weapon type. If you so if you so choose to have this option, and all the chromatic dragonborns will always get theirs in a line. So previously, when when uh, the chromatic dragon board that had a cone, like uh, red or uh, red or green, is not is now aligned. When you choose the, the Fizzman option, and you see you also have chromatic warning at fifth level, which on, uh, uh, as an action you, you can channel your chromatic energy to protect, yourself, protect yourself for one minute. You become immune to damage type associated to your to your ancestry. So if you're a red dragon board, oh immune. Okay. Yeah, it's a red dragon. For one minute though, you're immune to all fire, and that's actually pretty good if you if if you if you accidentally encounter or land in the horde of an ancient red dragon. Yep. Or if you're a an, um, if you're a red dragonborn sorcerer who two chose one wild magic, and you're afraid of uh, of uh, of killing yourself with fireball. Does that do? Yeah, that does do fire damage, right? I'm not just being yeah. stupid. It does fire damage because and, uh, and um some some uh, a lot of people are will argue saying like it should do force damage. 
I think it should depend on where you are in rel in relativity to the uh, point of origin. So if you're closer to the middle, it should do fire. Yeah, it should probably do fire, and then the further away you are, it should do just force. But that seems really complicated. Yeah. And but, but plus, so you, show plus you would think that it would do fire and force damage if you were like right in the middle. So. And plus, now you should uh, now the oh, well, well, if you're farther away, should should we do also less damage as well? You know, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. Well, th that's good for them for these dragons, unless you've got that wizard that can fucking change the oh, properties yeah. of their spells. Or the wi or that the uh, ones I, th I think it was your sorcerer trait or wizard trait where you guys to choose wh who to not target your spells to. Yeah, I think it's that might be Sork. I think it's like malleable magic or some shit like yeah. that. It's, yeah. And so yeah. Um, then next up, we'll, we'll skip dragon, jump, jump dragon jumps for another thing. Those are those are the new Kinnon block. Now with metallic dragonborns, so same thing. Uh, and uh, option 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 B for custom two ability scores. Uh, let's see, metallic ancestry, yeah, same thing as well. Uh, brass, bronze, copper, gold, and silver. Which you get these elements as, as well. And your breath weapon, breath weapon uh, now, will now be in a cone. So if you if you choose to be um, so, so you, cho you choose to be on a chromatic, it will be on the line. If you choose to be metallic, it will be, a, uh, it'll be in a cone. Assuming you choose the Fizzman option of creating your dragonborn. Um, I like that the metallic doesn't have a poison type. They just were like two fires, two fire damage. Oh yeah, I, I, I just did not realize that. So hold on. It's very weird. Yeah, so hold on. Gold is fire, and brass, so brass, is all, brass is also fire? Huh. Yeah. Weird. Uh, so and and then also the same thing resistance as well to depending on what your color is, metallic those at, at fifth level they also get two actual options and and um and, uh, for the the birth of it as well, innervating or repulsion. For innervating, the master receive a a, a con saving throw or be incapacitated. If you choose repulsion, the master receives a on a restraint saving throw or be pushed away twenty feet twenty feet away. Ooh. That's kind of cool. And also, on, uh, I forget to uh, cover this though. All dragonborns within the Fizz the Fizzbin option can read and write comment and one other language of your choice, which is kind of weird for, to me because of the fact that you can choose not to know draconic as a dra as a dragonborn. That is pretty dumb. <laughs> oh. And finally, the new canon block, the gem dragonborns. We are the crystal dragons. No. And oh. same same thing to get option A, option B, um, and they have a, a ancestry. They have a also an, uh, gem ancestry this time. So if you choose amethyst, it'll be forest. Crystal is radiant. Emerald is psychic. Sapphire is thunder, and topaz is necrotic. I, I would have thought topaz would be like uh, electric or something. What you thought wrong? Well, I, I guess they want to be you know an, um, uh, unique. Uh, for yeah. their birth weapon is, is, a, is a cone as well, and of course they get resistance to, to their own uh, damage type. Those get sound so like mine. You, you basically you can telepathically speak to creature which you see within thirty feet of you. You don't need to share a language with that creature, but the creature must be able to understand at least one language. So basically, it's like the, the stones you guys had in, in our last uh, session of um, of uh, of uh, warhounds. Yeah. They also get gem flight. Starting at fifth level, you can manifest that special wings in your body. Then, then these wings last for one minute. And on the further direction, you gain a fire speed equal to your walking speed. And you can't do this until you've, you, you, you can do this flight on a once per long rest. Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, they talked about the gem dragons being psionic in nature. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it's just their whole theme, I guess. But. <laughs> I find also kind of uh, funny though, because one of the damage types still is um, the both of them isn't force and thunder damage and then uh, kind of like the same thing. Probably no, I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it, I want to say yes, but thunder was supposed to be sonic damage originally in the. Yes. Order. Oh right, right, it's sound based. So it's so basically the sapphire sapphire dragonborns are just screaming at at you. <laughs> the, the most. Uh, the most shameful magic. 
<laughs> a sonic screech. Oh, you could totally play Magic Fist as a character. <laughs> and, and yes, you have to pause like that when you say it. And and you, and of course, yeah, you, you have to be a spellcaster, and you must have uh, the Bigby's hand. Oh yes, 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 yes. And so that's that's that kind of worms that not not tipped over. Now for the next kind of worms, dwarves. Alright, so at a young, so basically dwarves on uh, the uh, basically on uh, the age are roughly the same the same right as humans, but they're still considered young at, at fifty. They can live on average they live up to about three hundred fifty years. So the whole remember the whole rivalry thing between elves and dwarves? Yeah, because they, they live long enough to actually have a have one. Size is medium. Uh, the speed unfortunately this time is twenty five, but. Because because they're, they're, they're freaking dwarves, they're not the the speed's not reduced by when they're wearing heavy armor. Uh, they have dark vision. They also have dwarven resilience. Especially they have a, a advantage on saving throws against poison, and they they, they take on uh, half damage on, on, on uh, from poison. So basically, end up putting poison damage more more in, 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 into 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 the trash tier. Hmm. Uh, a little bit of water. <laughs> my, my name's Duke Horse Peddler, and I'm 50 years young. <laughs> Dwarves. Uh, uh, so they also get dwarven combat training. So basically, they, they immediately become proficient with uh, with a uh, axes and hammers, both one-handed and two-handed. And uh, also, the uh, uh, those are proficient with one tools, two of your choice, maybe smith tools, brule supplies, or mason's, mason's tools, because you know they're freaking dwarves. They're, they're drunk. They carve out stone, and they drunk. They're drunk. Twenty four seven. Blah blah blah. Jokes. All the all the stereotypes of dwarves. Also, and they speak like they're Scottish. Also, because of your uh, 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 your racial traits, so you, you also got stone cutting. Basically, you get times two proficiency by bonus when you do history checks related to stone work. And you also consider proficient if you're not if you're not already. Uh, languages they, they know are not common and dwarfish. Now let's let, now let's check off the um, sub races. So a hill dwarf, uh, your abilities your abilities are plus uh, wisdom you only get plus one, and but you can also get dwarven toughness. You get HP plus one at level one, and each time you level up you get also plus one HP and, and uh, increase as well. Because they have muscles on their eyeballs. They got muscles on your muscles. And muscles on our eyeballs. Uh, Duke, Duke Horse Peddler. And then Mountain Dwarf. You, you get strength, you get plus two strength. And you also get Dwarven Armor Training. Basically, you're proficiency with both light and medium armor. If, if you aren't or if you aren't already. Wait, okay. And then do we have the Duragar. You get um Ability is strength plus one. You get superior dark vision. Basically, your dark, dark vision done as that being six feet is now one hundred twenty feet. Oh yeah, because they're the uh, they're the under they're the under dark dwarves. Yep. That's right. Uh, but uh, a trade off is though you also have sunlight sensitivity. So basically, when in direct sunlight though, you have disadvantage on uh, perception checks, uh, sight sight based perception checks, and um, and also any any uh, attack attack actions as well. Uh, you also get dark out resilience, basically you get advantage on illusions, being charmed or paralyzed. And at third level, you, you, know, you get dark out magic, basically you, you, you can use the enlarge reduce uh, spell casting an ability uh, as an ability rather than a spell, but only the enlarge portion, only, only and only on yourself. And at fifth level, you, you can cast invisibility on yourself, but not not when you're on, uh, in direct sunlight. And you, you, you can use both uh, abilities once per, uh, per uh, once per long rest. Oof! At least they didn't give them their their other ability, which is apparently the ability to meld into stone. That was a thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was in fifth edition. I know that it was like I watched a video that goes over all of the editions, and I remember them specifically stating that they could meld into stone. I'm like. That sounds really cool as a character ability, but I'm pretty sure it'd be really broken if it was a player ability. No, but 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 seriously, can you imagine though? Like you're in the, the dark caves and like you hear giant footsteps, but you can't see anything, and and and, and attacking you and for a split second. You see a um, a giant Durgar coming out of invisibility, attacking you with a giant warhammer. Yeah, no, that's fucking horrifying. That's why they're that's why they're the Underdark. 
<laughs> Underdark isn't for unexperienced players. No, it's meant for at, at, at least like apparently it does um, uh, at least level 10 and above. <laughs> and lastly is uh, the uh, Mark of Warding Dwarf. You get an uh, intelligence and, uh, ability increased by, by one. And uh, you also get wars into intuition. You get a plus a plus D four for any uh, investigation or thieves. It's involving thieves tools. Uh, you can also cast alarm and mage armor at um, and at third level. You can cast arcane lock. Uh, one uh, you can do is one prolonged rest. And I uh, didn't add the part that what the modifier was because I, I thought it would be redundant if you're not a caster. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, says here that their modifier is uh oh intelligence as well. <laughs> yeah, and, actually useful one. Yeah, and you also get that uh, this is like huh no one to get armor of Agathis. Let's see, arcane lock, knock, lift a warning, magic circle. Oh, they also get more kinds of the faithful hound. <gasps> Liam in secret chest. Keeps all and that's all, the, and that's the dwarves, and that's basically all I made for this because <laughs> look, look at look at this. I, I made I made this map I made this grid fifty by fifty and, and, and did this. <laughs> I was planning to actually fit. All the players have a places in what is one little thing. No! Doors have to be like extra extra compared to Dragonborn. And she was like, I'll just be here in the corner. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, so uh Next up we'll uh we'll, we'll, let's see, we'll talk about the elves. You know the the pompous and uh, race uh, of, of of them all. Uh, let's see. So so on uh, base elf though, you, you, uh, ability score increased by a uh, dexterity plus, uh, plus two. Elves on on uh, um, physical maturity around the same age, same, same as, as humans, but they reach mental mental maturity around around a hundred. And they can live up to about several fifty years, on a, or a thousand, if you if you like to be like that. Uh, if you like to be, and uh, then um, have your own, have your own be there as well. Yeah. Um, medium, medium category for elves. On uh, uh, base walking speed is thirty feet. They also have dark vision. Like on uh, uh, like what race does it need dark vision? Her her her. Uh, Fey ancestry, uh, basically, and uh, uh, they have advantage of saving throws about being charmed, or or and uh, and mag and magic can 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 put you to sleep. Elves can't sleep at all. Yeah, they're just going to a trance. Yep. Think and, about what they did. And uh, for lo longest for them is like instead of being eight hours, and uh, it'll be four hours. So, an all elf campaign that, that that's kind of terrifying to and, um to coordinate. Yeah. You also get proficiency in perce perception as well, because you know, uh, nah, blah blah. I'm an elf. I do bow and arrow, and like what? be perception in the forest. What do you see with your elven eyes? Why do you have to say it like that all the time? And now for the different elves you can play as. First off, will be the dark elf or the drow. Uh, your uh, you you also get an an, an an increased charisma by by, by one, which in a way doesn't make sense. Is it because they're they're, they're more pretty looking or? Because I want that, you yes. know, I want that that, that, that the uh, serv the service doors would actually avoid dark elves and uh, call them ugly or something. No, I mean they might if they've never seen them, but they're honestly they're a lot more attractive than regular elves to me, in my opinion. But that could just be because of the white hair. I mean, I mean, white hair. I mean, the, the, uh, Edward, that, that, that's the reason why I made um, one of the conduits for Lumine a, a drow. I mean the beautiful long white hair, and she was wearing a. She's always wearing an a, a blindfold. Oh, because oh, of the light sensitivity. Yeah, apparently. yeah and plus though she's also a conduit of light. Uh, dark dark <laughs> elves, dark elves also have a superior dark vision, because you know they're uh, uh, under dark elves. 
and plus the, and because that and pl and pl but because of that though they also get sunlight sensitivity. Uh, they also don't have draw magic though, so as uh, they also know the death and light, the lights can drip. And when you reach a uh, third level, they also cast a uh, fairy uh, fairy fire once with this trait, and regain and regains and re regain uh, and uh, after a long rest. And at fifth level, you, you, you cast yeah. darkness. All of them return after a long rest and yeah. charisma is your uh, spellcasting. And so also draw, draw, draw weapon training, you, you, you have proficiency with rapiers, short swords, and crossbows. Because, you know, they use those to abduct uh, um, people and enslave them. And next up is the uh, the Eladrin, which is a uh, uh, cover of more kinds of foes. They brought uh, them back? Holy shit. Then kind and tomo foes. Here's an old man that looks like one of your teachers from back in the day. Ooh. I'm your teacher from high school, but I'm also Doctor Strange. Ooh. Unless he finds the other one where it's just like a... This one right here. Oh, oh, there we go. Ooh. Look at me. My it'll, be, it'll be covered in this book right here. And so the Eladrin, uh, let's see... Uh, are basically uh, the elves that that, that stayed uh, within the uh, within the Fey realm, and, and basically followed the the, the different um, associate and uh, seasonal qu kings and or queens. And so yeah, and because that you have four to choose from: uh, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. And in in all this, this is for your own little flavor of what elf you want you want to make. So first and foremost, though, your charisma also gets increased by one. You also get phase on uh, phase step as a bonus action. You can magically teleport within thirty feet of not by space. You can see once you use this, you trade. You can do so again at, at, at until you finish a short or long rest. And when you reach on uh, third level, you, you can your phase step gains additional effect based on your season. And uh, it requires a saving throw, which is a DC of eight eight equals your, your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier. And uh, basically, basically, it states that if you're autumn. After you use a face up though, two creatures of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charred by you for one minute. Or until your companion deals any damage to it. Which they probably will. Which is an. Um, they're barbarian. Speaking of which though, like an. Um, not, not, not to say you guys were bad players though, but did you handle that charm on uh, encounter very poorly? In, yeah. um, in um, uh, Warhounds. It happens. Let's see, uh, Winter, when you use face step though, on uh, one creature of your choice, you can see within 5 5 of you, before you teleport, must have seen a wisdom saving throw, or be frightened until the end of the turn. Because Winter is scary, yo. Winter's... Okay. Oh. Spring! When you use the, the, the face step, um, you can touch one, one creature within 5 feet of you, the creature then teleports in the <laughs> <instead> of you. <laughs> Appearing in occupied space of your choice, you can see within the view of you. Oh, it has to be willing. Damn it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Winter, you can see within 5 feet of you. Oh, it has to be willing. Damn it. Or. Hear me out, Edward. Imagine you're a big buff on a, on a guy covered in heavy armor, a sword, a big scary sword, a, a, big, a big scary sword and shield. Mm -hmm. And they're actively trying to r r r run away from him. You can teleport him in the middle of the enemy. And then he can do the Legend of Zelda spin attack and take everybody out. Now he uses his gun to shoot them. I mean, depending on what books you're using, yeah, you can use your gun to shoot them. Use his machine gun to shoot them. And finally, on uh, uh, Summer. Uh, basically, immediately after you use face step, each creature within your choice that you can see within five feet of you takes fire damage equal to your charisma modifier, minimum one. Okay. You know, because summer is fire. <laughs> Air. <laughs> Air. Water. <laughs> Air. Water. Fire. Earth. Fucking magnets. How do they work? Yeah, well, the Eladrin wouldn't have to. They're not. Contested. And these are the Ela the Eladrin from the Markinstone foes. The, the uh, Eladrins are also been covered within the dungeon, the, the DM's guide, 
uh, ever so sh ever so shortly, which is on uh, the uh, intelligence plus one, proficiency with uh, long swords, short swords, sh on, uh, bows, and face step, which is just busy step, but plain busy step. They're just really boring, as, <laughs> as opposed to Morden Ganons. Fine. Uh, next up, we the high the high elves. Uh, which is now of course the players' book, which is you know this book right here. The the basically your know, your bread and butter. Your uh, I, I was gonna say something and uh, um um uh, not good. Uh, but anyway, anyway and uh, so for, for for the high elves though, you your intelligence increased by plus one. You know one character for of your choice of the wizarding spell list. Assuming assuming you're not a wizard. Mm. No, uh, even if you're a wizard, you can get. A spell from the wizard spell list. Oh yeah, that's true because the uh, cant cantrips are your bread and butter and later later levels. Yeah. Also, if I mean, it would be you know less impressive to take it at a higher level, but chances are, if you're playing this, you'll probably start off at level one if you're just starting out. Mm -hmm. Unless on uh, uh, unless tell tell to DM. Hey, um, can I change from a to to a higher from a human on uh, right now? But you're level ten. Yeah, I know. And they just hit you with that potion of different race or whatever it's called. And you just your DM just goes, haha, now you're a new You're a new person. Uh, okay then, yeah, so you can be can be high up if you want. Yay, but you have to be a little one. No. I, I just wanted an extra extra can trip. Well too bad. You should have thought of that when you were making your character. And I also get that for training, which is you know the just uh um Long sword, short sword, and uh, also the bows, and also uh, extra language. So, uh, no, you, yeah, you can uh, no, one additional language of, of your choice, like draconic, because your dragonborn decided he didn't want draconic. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is sea elves, which is also covered in, in, um, in more kinds than not tomb foes. Uh, let's see, uh, now your ability, your, ability, uh, your ability score increases by, by, by constitution on um, plus one. Uh, you go like a seal of training, which basically means you're proficient with the spear, trident, light crossbow, or net. Uh, you're a child of the sea, you also have a swimming speed of 30 feet. And you can also breathe uh, air and water. Uh, and plus, uh, and plus you have the, uh, the ability to talk to fish. Not talk to fish. You Fine. Communicate you communicate with fish. Well, any uh, uh, any beast that has an innate, innate swimming speed. Go, sea lion! That's not a sea lion, that's a lion that's in the water! <laughs> it's swimming, it's got a swim speed. It took that It took that feat that gave it a swimming speed. Shut up! You can also on uh, uh, speak uh, and uh, uh, you can also know the language on um, Aquan, which is one of the uh, prana, uh, primordial elemental uh, um, uh, languages. Next up, next up is, is the Shutter Kai, also on, uh, covered in, in Mordekai and uh, Natomo foes. Basically, these are elves that are under the service of the, of the Raven Queen. So your con and uh, score increases by one. You have uh, resist, re resistance resistance to necrotic damage, and you also uh, the Revy Queen has blessed you uh, has given you a blessing. As a bonus action, you can magically teleport within thirty feet to an other uh, place you can see. Once you use the tree, you can do, this, do so again after finish a long rest. At, at level three, though, you, can, you gain resistance to all damage when you teleport using this trait. The resistance lasts until you start your next turn. During that time, you appear ghostly and translucent. Uh, ah, you can't, saw. you can't hit me. I'm a ghost. Ah, why the hell did you punch me? Punching ghosts is part of my, is part of my bucket list. Punching ghosts. Next up is Wood Elf. And fuck, we might have to make a part two. Uh, uh, no, episode two, part two. Uh, fucking damn it. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, we'll cover. Okay, we'll cover the uh, uh, the, the player's handbook on uh, on uh, uh, races. Then we'll cover the uh, and um, we'll we'll get as far as we can. We we'll get as far as we can. But so we started late because of, 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 of uh, what I had to do earlier and um, the stupid uh, OBS BS. Yep, OBS BS. Yep, and so the, the, uh, next up the, the wood elf and uh, another on. Um, uh, Sub race, your wisdom score gets increased by one. You 
proficient with long sword, short sword, short bow, and long bows, if you aren't already, you'll be an elf, an elf and all. Mm -hmm. uh, your walking speed increases, increases to 35 feet, and you'll scare master in the wild. You can attempt to hide e e even only when you are lightly obscured by foliage, hair rain, falling snow, mist, or natural, uh, natural phenomena. Ooh. Next up is uh, Pallet Elf, which is in, uh, covered in uh, this book right here. The Wildemount book. Do they have a picture of what they look like? Is that what that elf was on the cover? Or? I guess so. <laughs> Blessing of the moon we found. Alright, so Pallet Elf is on your uh, wisdom because it's going to increase by one. You have advantage on investigation and insight checks. And you know the Blessing of the Moon Weaver. You know the light cantrip. At third level, you, you cast Sleep once. And it returns after a long rest. At fifth level, you can cast Invisibility on yourself only. And it returns after, after a long rest. And Wisdom is, is a spellcasting modifier. And you don't need components. Woo! I don't know why I did that point. <laughs> and next up is uh, Mark your Shadow Off, because Eberron. Uh, you you both increase, increase, increase by one. You have a, a, a cutting intuition, though, so you, you, know, you can add a d4 to your stealth checks. And, and performance checks. Shape shadows, you, you know the minor illusion cantrip. Start at third level, you, you, you can also cast invisibilities on, on yourself. No, no. In, invisibility with this trait. Once you cast a spell with this trait, you can't do so again to finish a long rest. Charisma is your is your, is your, 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 um, your ability modifier. And this is supposed to get uh, for, uh, for Market for Market Shadow if you choose if you choose to be a, a spellcaster. Lots of like you know cloak and dagger spells. Yes. This... Oh, I hope this I hope this one becomes an actual race. There's literally just angel elves. Wait, where? It's under it's under UA, so we're not going to end up covering it. But yeah, yeah, they're they're winged elves. I'm just like that's kind of cool. That's interesting. I don't. Ooh, oh, speak oh, the, oh, the Astro Elf. There's right? an Astro Elf? Oh, never mind. I, no, I thought they were talking about that one. Called oh. I mean... I don't think they have it. I mean, if you want to for flavor, and, uh, we, and, um, if you want to for flavor, though, you can and, uh, and, uh, play as, as an Asimar Elf uh, in the world. Mm. Next, up is, <laughs> next up is... Next up is the Gnome. Right, and so, so base gnome on uh, ability score increases and uh, by, uh, intelligence by, by two. Uh, gnomes usually mature similarly as humans, but uh, they they sell into adult life around forty, and they can live up to, up to the, the three hundred fifty on on average. It's not, not apparently it's not too uncommon, but they can live up to up to five five hundred years. But you know, kid, uh, gnomes. Uh, usually around three to four feet, and so you basically size your size category is small. Basically, and I'd like to point out that a lot of people always, for whatever reason, size category gnomes under halflings when they show a chart, but they're also going normally by like the maximum height in those charts that I've seen. The maximum height for a gnome is four, so they're still technically, if you want to do maximum height charts, they'd still be taller than halflings, so we're only at three feet. Yeah, I, I, I always see on um, gnomes to be more like uh, uh, mini dwarves, while halflings to be like the hobbits from um, from uh, yeah, Lord no, of the Rings. That's what they are. But the thing is, is that a lot of people, for whatever reason, tend to tend to take gnome as like, oh, the little tiny garden gnome gnomes. Here you go. It's like no. No, it's between three and four feet. Their maximum is four feet. The smallest they can get is as, as tall as a halfling can be. Well, anyway, uh, and, um, draw them as smaller, and it ticks me off. Well, anyway, though, the, the, your speed because because you're so because you're, you're small is on uh, twenty five feet. You have dark vision. Um, you also gain advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and Christmas saving saves against magic. And you can read, you can read, uh, you, can, uh, you also know common and gnomish. And now for the sub, sub races, so you have forest gnome, your ability is for increases also get increased by none, your dexterity also, also gets increased by one. Uh, you know the, uh, the minor, minor illusion cantrip, is your, is your modifier for it. 
And also, you can speak with small beasts. Through small sounds and gestures, you may communicate simple ideas or small to, with small or smaller beasts. Hey, bird, um, go over here and annoy that person. <laughs> tweet, tweet. Well, only if you give me food. Fuck off, that wasn't part of the deal. Also, I just came up with the idea that when you speak gnomish, it just sounds like this. <laughs> Underpants. Work all day, work all night with the underpants. No, that's that's just what they're saying, but it's very quiet because they're they're embarrassed that they know that song. Uh, next up will be the rock gnome. Uh, your or your cost. You can't also get increased by by one. You actually actually know that Arthur's lore, which is, we would make a history check related to magical, alchemical, or, or technological items. You can add twice your proficiency bonus instead of uh, so instead. Uh, Tinker, you, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna read this as is because this is like a, a kind of kind of a convoluted to actually summarize. You have proficiency with the Arthur's tools, which is Tinker's tool, Tinker tools. Using those tools, you can spend one hour and ten gold pieces worth of materials to construct a tiny clockwork device. AC is five, one HP. The device ceases to function after 24 hours unless you spend one hour repairing it to keep the device functioning. We use their action to dismantle it. At that time, you can reclaim the materials used to create it. You can have up to three such devices active at a time. When you create a device, choose one of the following options. Clockwork toy. This toy is a clockwork animal, monster, or person such as a frog, mouse, bird, dragon, or soldier. When placed on the ground, the toy moves on uh, five feet across the ground on each of your of your turns in a random direction. It makes noises appropriate to the creature it, it represents. Fire starter. The device produces a miniature flame, which you can use to light a candle, torch, or campfire. Using the device requires your, uh, uh, your action. Music box. When open, this music box plays a single song of moderate volume. The, the box stops playing when it reaches the song's end or when it's closed. At your DM's discretion, you may make the uh, objects with effects similar to to power in power to these. The pre presentation catch-up is a good baseline for such effects. Fart cube. <laughs> That's what I would make. Fart cube. It's just a cube that produces a fart stink. Think of the applications. <laughs> Also, Firestarter, I would argue, would also be able to light drapes on fire, but that's just me. I mean, with, uh, again, the DM's discretion, though, you can. It'll, it'll be like uh, it'll be like when uh, Jothan Joestar lit his mansion on fire. <laughs> Good bad. Good, Good bad, Juju. That's so funny. I'm sorry, what? Oh, cool, thanks, Jothan, you killed us both! That's fine. I didn't need this life anyways. I'm a knight. Knights always die anyway. Leave their girlfriends Next up alone. is the, uh, the Smriffleblin, or the Deep Nubs. Oh god, my friend Oki was obsessed with Smriffleblin. I think you can actually pronounce it properly. That's how obsessed he was with it. The Smriffleblin. I just call them goblin gnomes because they kind of look like goblins to me. Uh, okay, so like, your... Uh, so your dexterity also also gets increased by one. You have superior dark vision, and you also get stone camouflage. You have advantage on stealth checks when when you're trying to hide in rocky terrain. And then you team up with uh, what was the other one? It was the under dwarf, right? The both the you... Durgars? Yeah, they just they just team up and high five each other while hiding in the rocks. Like, what was that? <laughs> They're just like bros. I don't know. I imagine the the the, the man, uh, like uh, that takes his time to actually try try and like do makeup and glue pieces of rock onto himself. And while the <laughs> the, the just looks at him and, <laughs> and he touches himself and he casts his cast invisibility. <laughs> well, good luck, asshole. Oh, <laughs> that's not fair. You cheated. <laughs> And finally, the Marco Scribing Gnome, which is, again, an Emeron. A base score also gets increased by his charisma. You get the like, good scribe, so you can add a d4 to uh, either his, uh, the history involving uh, calligraphers, calligrapher, calligrapher supplies. You also get an uh, scribe inside, so you know the message cantrip. You can also cast Comprehend Languages spell with his trait, starting at third level. And you go, uh, oh, 
uh, with this trait. Starting at third level, you can also cast uh, Ma Magic Mouth. Once you cast a spell trait, you can do so again after a long rest, and Intelligence, intelligence is your spellcasting ability. And you also get these spells on, on, uh, if you're a spellcaster. Lots of uh, talking spells. Compersend languages, that's Jared's favorite. I, 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 I can't compersend. You try, but you cannot compersend. Yep. Alright, next up will be the I like that hmm? I like that gnomes don't have any like we th a lot of the ones we've been covering have all had like UAs or like fucking plane shift like race like sub races. Gnomes, nothing. We don't care. We don't like the gnomes. <laughs> Screw them. Well remember it's because of that a lot of people would like to choose um, uh, either a cool, a cool race like Elf or Elf or Drow or Azamar or you know the the min, min max uh, humans. Yeah. Min max humans. Like uh, remember, uh, uh, deep down, a lot of people always like to choose uh, the, the path of uh, least least resistance. Mm. Let's have let's have elves. The um, the most famous mutts uh, of the D and D universe, along, along with half along with half orcs. Uh, let's see, so. In the player's handbook, and, um, uh, let's see, your charisma score gets increased by two, and and also two other abilities and scores of your choice get gets increased by increased by one, so you get f uh, and, um, you get extra two, so that because because of their half elves, uh, half elves are not age at the same rate as humans, but they reach adulthood at twenty, and they're much longer than humans. However, often exceeding uh, over one hundred eighty years. Uh, half elves are medium. Their speed is 30 feet. They have dark vision. Like, what race doesn't? Her, her. They also have an accessory. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic, magic can't put you to sleep. But you still need to sleep for your for long rest. Uh, you also gain a proficiency with two skills of your choice. And you can speak uh, common, elven, and one language of your choice, because you're special. Yes, like, <laughs> like Draconic, because you're because your trick your dragonborn decided you don't know how to speak draconic. <laughs> oh. That's that's the kind of dra that's the kind of dragonborn Rukai would have been. I don't know how to speak draconic. <laughs> your dragonborn though. <laughs> but your dragonborn though, I wish I wasn't. E e eating a baby. Uh, next up is uh, a, a, a bit of uh, variant on the half elf, uh, which is in the Sword Coast uh, Avengers Guide. Uh, let's see. Uh, you don't have a cover for, so here's a picture of a sword on the beach. Mm. <laughs> oh, it just adds a little bit more heritage uh, to it, though. So we should. Uh, like, like, for example, on, on uh, elf training, because the long swords, short swords are short bows. Uh, high up health, uh, high up heritage. You get one cantrip within the wizard spell list. Basically, you get a feat from the that, that perspective. Um, oh, because uh, you're half of of that elf. So if you choose to be like, oh, I'm a half elf, uh, half drow, then you get the the, the, the you get death ignites, and darkness and fairy fire, or you're half elf um, of um, of the sea elf, then you get a, a, a swim speed, but you, you can't breathe. You can't breathe water. Yeah, yeah, yada. I actually like that. It is pretty cool. Also, just to clarify to anybody who's not really reading along with us but looking at it, it says you get one of the following traits. So if you see that it's that if you take a high elf one, you have to choose between either elf weapon or cantrip. Or with the wood elf, fleet of foot, or mask of the wild, which Mask of the Wild uh, I I'd probably probably choose that over Fleet Foot. Mm -hmm. And then just become a monk, so 35 feet ain't no thing, because eventually I'll have 40 feet of movement. Because apparently, even though uh, elves are all uptight and uh, uptight, like all, all prim and proper and posh, deep down, they're the most horniest of, of all the D&D races. Yep, they're the bards of the D&D races. Or how people like to play bards, I should say. <laughs> or, you know, they're, they're, they're stereotypical, like, oh, I have a child with this human servant. Fire her and send her away. That child's not mine. This <laughs> very clearly looks like him. No, no, you're lying. 
<laughs> then, like, at a, a, a 50 years later, he c comes back for revenge. Oh, how who could have saw this on the first first scene circumstance? Oh no, the uh, the, the the what was, what was it again? The uh, 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 the 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 something, something of my actions. Oh, the consequences of my actions. Yeah, that. Like, oh no, the consequences, the consequences of my actions. Who could have saw this coming? Possibly me, but I was, uh, I was, uh, I, would, uh, I still wouldn't give a shit. Oh, you're killing me! Stop. Who could have seen this coming? If only I'd listened to Mama and taken Divination Wizard <laughs> as, my, as my training instead of instead of the cool evocation. I don't know why I didn't cast Fireball at this person, but I'm dead. Uh. Next up is on uh, the very half elves on on uh, what comes with different marks, and again from Emberon. So for marker detection, you get um, wisdom score increased by by two, and one other ability of your choice. Um, you're 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 able to add a D four to an uh, investigation and 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 and, ins and insight. Uh, you also get uh, cast detect magic, de detect poison and disease, and and uh, third level you can also see invisibility. You can't do so again to finish a long rest. With a, a, ton of, a ton of being your spellcasting ability. I, I kind of checked out there for a second when you said see invisibility. I was like, wait, so you can't see invisible people. You can just see that there's invisibility everywhere. It blo blocks your vision. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 feel, I feel like the, the is, 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 it's... I don't know wait, wait, said that though. I, I feel like it's a like, similar vein of, of casting dick magic within, within a, ma a magic store. <laughs> Blinds you. Ah, ah, flashbang through the door. <laughs> ah, the consequences of my action. Just uh, like that elf that nobody remembers. Huh? The, 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 a lot, of, a lot of like on, um detection spells. So this can be, this can be like, like, like a, a a weird uh, detective. Yeah. R O A T M I N, the crime solving rank 11, Paladin. <laughs> it makes sense. Oberon, Eberon's supposed to be. I don't know if that's how it is now, but I remember when they first started talking about it, it was sort of like a noir style setting in, like, steampunk noir mm. in uh, the DD settings. That could be a quite interesting uh, uh, to put to put into my uh, um, uh, uh, to put into my, uh, my modern setting. Because yeah, you, you are you are like the, you are kind of like the, the detectives. Yes, yes, we are. Except we're probably also really bad at it. Yeah, I mean, like, and unless I mean, you are actually sort of killer guy. Well, I, I kid. <laughs> that just reminded me of of uh, Anchorman. Yeah, so and so killed the guy with a trident. <laughs> like so and so, where'd you, get, where'd you get the grenade? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, if only if only Sora had chose to be like me, the, <laughs> the naked gnome that turns into animals to constrict people. And we turn back into naked again, even though even though on uh, you know that uh, your clothes are not to transport with you. Does she know that, or does she just choose not to accept that as her reality? Next oh. up is uh, Mark of the Storm. Um... Oh, okay. Uh, you use this feature to replace the ability scores. Okay, so these are different. Or they're probably the same thing. I don't know. Uh, your, charisma, your charisma gets increased by 2, and uh, your dexterity gets increased by 1. Uh, when writes intuition, you get add a d4 to your acrobatics or involving navigator tools. You gain resistance to light lightning damage. Huh. You Take know that everything else. <laughs> you know the gust cantrip, and starting at third level, um, you, you know the gust of wind spell, and you call the spell uses one spell once once per long rest, and charisma is just because ability. So far, that one mark is the only one that had dexterity as uh, dexterity as spellcasting spell <laughs> ability. That's so stupid. Also, I just realized half elves also in that same boat with the gnomes. They don't get a lot of love apparently. <laughs> Even though they have more traits compared to their uh, elven brethren. That might actually be why they just don't get as much love. Like, Gnome's got no excuse. They don't have a lot of things, but 
Elves have, like, literally everything going for them. It's almost like the person that wrote 5e was, like, in love with elves or something. I mean, if you look at elves in, in both the, um, the dark and the light side of, of the internet, they're literally everywhere. <laughs> oh god, do you think Will Wheaton was the reason why they brought back the Elydran? I don't know. Uh, I don't know why though, because and then who who would uh, take Will Wheaton seriously? He 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 gets like an uh, uh, only net once. Well, that's not why you shouldn't take him serious. It's more, he seems like he's kind of an asshole in real life. But again, my opinion. Not I'm not saying it is fact. It's just uh, my so, and with that though, now you always got these ones well, which is an um again it reminds me. This is like a an half off version of the of the Storm Sorcerer. Because you get a lot of, like, storm blade spells. Wind wall? That's a spell? I haven't even fucking heard of that. Next up is uh, the, the other months, the, the other uh, months in the series, they have, they have orc. That's why it's a druid and ranger one. They don't use those normally. Holy shit, these, this, the havoc only has two. That's sad. Or easy. Oh, yeah, no, they... They, they're, like, they were just like, no, fuck you. Uh, so, <laughs> they, only, they only have half orcs, and then... Half orc variant, mark of finding. Wow. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Wizards of the Coast. I mean, at the very least, Travis showed uh, showed us how good half orcs can be, and and in, uh, in Critical Role too. I want. It's not fair. I want more love for my half elf character, whose mom is a muscular orc woman. <laughs> Wait. The... And uh. I uh, want uh, um, uh, skill skill wise. Can you, can you play as a half orc, half elf uh, the character? Um, you would probably have to pick one or the other uh, features. You probably couldn't mix and match. Really, have to be one. Or yeah, the but, other. But, but, Which, if you're going to if you're going to pick from one or the other, I honestly would just be half elf uh, or not half elf, half orc because they have that one thing where it's like. They can just nope a death like one time, unless unless you're Travis and uh, you, you die twice in in in, in, the, in the same round. Yeah, I mean, it from like a narrative standpoint, it makes sense. If you were like trying to put the orc down and he just gets back up, there you would your guys would immediately go no, just start shooting at him. They'd be freezing, be like, okay, no, <laughs> and, you know, dead. Right, so anyway, so half orcs. Uh, this, again, this is all in the player's handbook. Your score, your, yeah, stre your strength, your strength gets increased by two, and your con gets increased by one. Uh, half orcs are mature a lot faster than humans, reaching adulthood at around age fourteen, and they age no notably faster and rarely live longer than seventy-five years. Uh, size, uh, sizes sizes half orcs are, are of course medium as well, but they can go as tall as six feet. Uh, base walking speed is thirty feet. They also have dark vision. Like again, which which race doesn't hard hard. The also, they're also kind of menacing. You get proficiency with the uh, intimidation skill. Uh, Realist endurance. When, when you reduce to zero hit points, uh, but not killed outright, you can drop to one one instead. Can't use this again to finish a long rest. Savage attacks. When you score a critical hit with a melee uh, uh, melee weapon attack, you can roll one of the weapon's damage dice one, one additional time and add it to the extra damage of the critical hit. And languages, you also know uh, common and orc. Oktar Rogar! Sorry, I, don't know, like, I had to sneeze. I don't know, <laughs> like, I don't know why anything that involves the, the orc language, I, I mean, think of the, the World of Warcraft orcs. I think most people do nowadays. Like, Oktar Rogar! That's their, uh, that's their Zatch Bell spell. And next, the next up though is uh, the very uh, or half orc, which is market finding from again Eberron. Uh This replaces all your stats you get from the player's handbook. And so, uh, and, um, you, uh, so instead, your ability score gets increased by uh, no wisdom. Wisdom gets increased by two, and your con gets increased by one. You also get dark vision still. Um, you also get uh, add a d4 to perception and survival checks. You also get gain the Hunter's Mark on a spell with this trait, starting at th and at third level you can cast Locate Object, and you can't do so again uh, until you finish a long rest, and Wisdom is, is your ab ability on, uh, on when you cast spells. Hmm. You, can, you, you also know Common and Goblin. Ooh. 
Huh. Check me out, boys. I'm gonna go pick up some hot goblin waifus. <laughs> you, He's so buff and he can speak our language. That's that that hits all our checkpoints. You, you basically just and uh, uh, summarized all the comics, but uh, all, all the comics were from that one artist on uh, Bell Buddy. Yeah, I know. I've been watching a lot of them. It's <laughs> like orcs should talk like that. What that? Uh, uh, in, in, a, in a very deep girl Cockney accent. Yeah. I mean, why not? Oh, we're a, we're a bunch of orcs, and we don't we we'll say no to you elven thoughts. And so yeah, so they see fairy fire, long strider, lucky animal, lots of ranger spells. I, mean, I guess it makes sense. Uh, next up will be the the halfling. <laughs> Fling? God damn it. Uh, it's uh, all because the fucking estate of the guy that wrote uh, uh, the Tolkien estate basically was suing them over the use of the word hobbit. So they were like, well, good. Wait, do you, do you use be called hobbits? Yeah. Huh. Because that's what halflings are hobbits. They were originally called hobbits, and then the, the Tolkien estate got a hold of them and was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, Fuck you too, then your husband's dead anyways, you dread up old hag, and then they're just like, halfling then! And so, anyway, so your building is probably increases by, by two. Um, your size is uh, also small. You reach up to the, the three feet tall. Your base walking speed is 25 feet. You get the lucky uh, that trait. When you roll on that, when you roll a one on an attack roll, a ability check or saving throw, you can reroll the die, you must use the new result even if it is a one. And then you just get the the lucky feet as well. <laughs> and be a divination wizard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically say fuck you to the DM. Yeah. No, there was literally um one of the guys that I watched that talks about D&D &D did a video where they basically made a halfling with those characteristics. And it was like just bumble around be pretend you're Mr. Magoo, it's fine. <laughs> bumble your way through success. Like, hello, miss. I like to get this piece of fruit. Like, blah, blah, blah. I think he called it the Bill Murray build, actually. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, I want to make one now. I call, I call him Lucky Ted. Oh, God. Oh, no. Like, it, it, like he'll be like, that, 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 like Donald's cousin from uh, from DuckTales. Where er, er, everything always uh, goes on so well for him. Oh, yeah, that guy. I don't know why, I thought you were going to say Spongebob's cousin, and I'm like, that guy's super unlucky, though. Let's see, uh, Brave, you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Uh, nimble, you can move through st in the space of any creature that is the size larger than you, so basically on a, um, almost almost anyone. Uh, uh, that means you, you can, you know, common and halfling. No, I'd like to point out that Nimble doesn't say anything about what type of armor you're wearing, so... My old company L <laughs> halfling <laughs> could just run through people's legs in full plate armor. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Coming through. Uh, I imagine, uh, imagine it's like an, uh, an, uh, a um, a half trash can size on, on a person person like walking around going. Excuse me, pardon me. Chunk, 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 chunk. I just imagine <laughs> he does that, and somebody's like, "Whose robot is this?" <laughs> Whose trash can is this? Don't mind me just taking my trash can for a walk. La la la. la. <laughs> uh, I'm an end halfling. Alright, so next is Lightfoot Halfling. Uh, you also get an increased uh, plus one to, to your charisma. And you're naturally stealthy. Uh, you can attempt to hide even when you are obscured, uh, obscured by a creature that has at least one size l l larger than you. The complete opposite of uh, Ari's. He was very boisterous and loud, which is probably why I took the next, the next uh, subclass. Next is the the stout halfling, which uh, you get you get your con score increased by one, and you have advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have resistance to poison poison damage. Basically, you're the dwarven halfling. That's just. That you're half dwarf. <laughs> Somebody just rewrites that. They're like, no. Half dwarf. Next is an, uh, the Ghostwise Halfling, which is in Sorcos Sorcos Adventure Guide. 
ability score increased by not, uh, you get wisdom score by plus one, and you get silent speech. You can telepathically speak to any creature within 30 feet of you. The creatures understand uh, you and only you only if the two of you share a language. You, you can pick and uh, telepathically the, in this way uh, one creature at a time. Basically, <laughs> they're a telepathic ha halfling. Yeah, they're also wise apparently because their wisdom and score increased by one, which is where the wise part comes from. I don't understand ghosts. Ghosts don't silently talk to people. Well, I guess they do. Never mind. Forget my stupid rant. I mean, except except for the ones in uh, in Danny Phantom. They're always loud and obnoxious and, and and want to hunt you. And then they and then 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 Butch Hartman decides to steal a character design for one of his new ghosts that he's working on, and it's just. It's that thing from the the Venture Brothers where it's like ignore me, <laughs> and that's the ghost. Remember when Butch Hartman done a guest star in uh, Viva La Vieri's episode about that? This is basically Danny Phantom. Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? Oh shit. That's such a that, that's such a cool one. Yeah. And so he gets next, fast forward, and people are accusing him of stealing people's art, but that's neither here nor there. Next up is uh, the, the Lotsuden Halfling, which is in, which is in uh, the Spurs, Spurs Guide to Wildermount, which I should buy the book on uh, sooner, sooner or later. Mm. Uh, let's see, uh, your wisdom score is by one. You have Children of the Woods. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, children of the Woods. So they're just... Wait, so then they're just... They're just those things from Game of Thrones? Or well, I was referencing to the, to the movie that the Children of the Corn. Oh, I forgot that was a movie. <laughs> and so you know the Jurocraft can cantrip. At third level, you also know Entangle. At fifth level, you also can cast Spike Growth. And you, you can't cast your spells and uh, again to after you finish a long rest. And you no your opponents and your ability to cast your spells is Wisdom. I just, I don't know why, but I thought it was going to say you can cast spike growth, parentheses, only on you. And I'm just like, does that <laughs> kill you or does that give you spikes? I don't know why. You, it kind of reminds me of the one, that one vampire from, uh, from Battle Tendency where uh, he can grow spikes on himself. Oh, God. And yeah. he, got, he got killed by a scarf. <laughs> he did. I forgot about that. Well, AC, ACDC and I got killed by by, uh, by ordinary wool hat. Yeah, that is true. Here's the thing I, I noticed though with the the, the pillarman. The pillarman always said said that, that um they killed a bunch of, of uh Haman users. And the reason why they were killed so easily by Joseph is because of the fact that, that uh, Joseph didn't kill them uh directly. He killed them through on uh, uh through uh, uh, tactics and uh and wit. And throwing them in a volcano. <laughs> yeah. I mean at that point though he was literally really invincible and 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 Rocky uh, uh, arguably you know rolled himself in the corner. Yeah, yeah, you could take it as that. And so, lastly, in that uh, timber walk, um, ability checks that make the track you are at disadvantage, and you can move through difficult terrain made of non-magical plants and overgrowth without expending extra movement. Huh. We'll uh, take that, everybody. Next up is uh, I get the marks from Eberron. Uh, mark of healing. Um, no, mark of hospitality. So, ability score increased by uh, charisma, charisma by one. Um, you get add D four to persuasion involving uh, uh, brewer's tools or cooks utensils. I imagine uh, a, um, a, bar a, bar a, bar a bartender having that. Yeah. This is Jared. Jared the hat. Also, know, uh, 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 innkeeper's, innkeeper's magic. Uh, you know the presentation uh, the, the, the cantrip. You can also uh, purify food and drink and uh, cast uh, Unseen Servant with this trait. Once you cast a spell on this trait, you can do so on the long rest and Charisma is your ability. And you also get uh, 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 these spells. Good berry, sleep, a couple motions. Yes, literally if you run, run in, these are your, your bread and butter. Yep. Uh, just a quick thing. I immediately after I read Innkeeper's Magic, I was like, "Oh yeah, he's got moldy food, so he uses Purify on it and makes it <laughs> pure again." And then he gives it to them, and right as they're about to eat into it, he uses Prestidigitation to make it smell like a fart. <laughs> that, like, ah! that'll be you. <laughs> yeah, that is. You know, fuck it, Jared's no longer the Mark ha the the Mark Halfling. That's me now. <laughs> this is my Halfling. 
<laughs> and next up is the Mark of Healing uh, Halfling. Uh, so your wisdom gets, gets increased by one. You, you don't add a d4 to medicine involving the herbalism kit. Uh, healing touch. You can cast Cure Wound spell with this trait. Ooh. At third level. So the, the ability modifier now makes sense. For the, for the, at, at least for this mark. Because uh, I uh, cure wounds. Does that? Oh, yeah, because it, it does it just like, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I see at third level, you can also cast Lesser Restoration. And you can't, you can't do so, cast these spells again until you finish a long rest. Uh, Wisdom is your, is your ability modifier, obviously. And you also get like a uh, cure wounds, healing word, Lesser Restoration. So basically, you, you become a cleric if you're not already a cleric. Yep. I thought you said clerk for a second. I'm like, no, that was the other one. <laughs> no, I, no, I imagine you're also like a, like a duality by halfling, so you have this mark, but you're like a, 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 um, a, um, a, um, what's, what's, what's the school of magic? What's the school of magic all about dest the, the destruction? Uh, evocation. Yeah, like your evo evocation uh, uh, wizard, but you also have this mark as well. So you you'd be like, I'm gonna kill you. Oh, I'm sorry, blood children. Here, let me heal you. I mean, cure wounds and healing word on a wizard is like an uh, uh, is like an um, uh, like borderline broken. I just realized that you basically just said you're gonna fucking Josuke them. You're gonna injure them just to heal them, so you can injure them again. No, 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 no. I'll I'll be a halfling monk that has this. And uh, 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 the healing. Wait, no. What monks the... monks can't, uh, can't cast spells. Damn it. No, but they can heal people. Yeah, using cure wounds once, but once per day, though. Huh? No, I meant like the mercy monk. Oh, mercy monk, yeah. But the, I, 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 I talk about monks that don't, don't have spell slots, though. Ah, that is true. Yeah, and there is no actually a uh, fist fighting uh, on uh, wizards on uh, a. Uh, Besides, may maybe uh, war magic. Magic uh, fist. fist. <laughs> there was a guy that built a fucking strong. I was here. I heard a, somebody was telling me a story. Well, it wasn't more telling me a story. It was a video that I watched. But somebody made specifically a wizard that had immense strength because the guy that he didn't like that had killed his character prior. Uh -huh. So he decided to take things from that character by arm wrestling him for them. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like, oh, he's a wizard. He doesn't have that much strength. And he rolled it and beat the guy. He's like, what? Who makes a strength-based wizard? And he's like, me? Out of spite? I, uh, cast, I cast fist. I cast middle finger. I mean, like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you make a, a strength-based wizard, then that means like, uh, your main stat will be strength, and your sub stat will be intelligence. Yep. I mean, no, like, you just... just you decide to become a you decide to become a frat boy wizard, so your intelligence is very low. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, and uh, next up uh, after half fling, next up is T fling, which is you, which is you are you know half demons. Uh, so your charisma score oh, they're gets. They're gonna have a lot, aren't they? Um, oh, never mind. They don't. Ma have that many much. the never many mind. the bloodlines actually. Yeah, that's what I thought, and then it's just like I looked at the little table of contents. It's it's not that bad. It's just it's just the, 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 it looks it looks bulky because of the bloodlines. The bloodlines is just just uh, just adds on to, to the main tiefling. Yeah. So uh, the, the base score increases. Uh, you get uh, main tieflings are uh, plus two charisma because you know they're very seductive. Haha, -ha, uh, memes. Um, but no, seriously, seriously though, like and, and um, when it comes to two DD waifus, I always choose between uh, uh, tieflings and and drow. Yeah. for Edward. Um, tieflings and uh, mature, mature uh, same race humans. They're also size medium. Their speed is thirty feet. They also have dark vision because again, m uh, jokes. What race doesn't? Har har. Yeah. Uh, they have health resistance. You, you have resistance to fire damage. You, you, you also you also know common and inferno. Now let's look at the bloodlines. They, they, can, they can alter your tiefling. There's the the common one, which is the, bl the blood of Asmodius. You, your all, your touches also increased by one. You also know the thaumaturgic catrip. At third level, you get hellish rebuke. Uh, at second, at sec, uh, as 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 a second level spell. Ooh. It's a very good spell. I love hellish yeah, rebuke. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, at fifth level, you also gain the darkness spell. You, you cast once. Uh, 
And let's see, Charisma is just podcast ability, and uh, you, you can't do these spells again until you finish long rest. Or if you have spell slots. Or, I mean, that's assuming you had the spell on uh, prepared for you. Yeah, that's that's also true. Next up is done. Uh, next up, and uh, these national bloodlines for Tiefling are in more kinds more kinds done uh, Tomo Foes. And up is on uh, the bloodline of uh, Bel- Belzebul. Your intelligence gets increased by one. You also know the, the uh, you also know the, the, the thaumaturgy catch, catch up. At third level, you get ray of sickness, as a, as a second level spell. At fifth level, you you, you gain uh, crowd, crowd of madness. Charisma as ability, it can't do so uh, uh, and catches again to a fish long rest. And see, this kind of fits because I'm pretty sure Balzabul is just supposed to be Beelzebub, which is the king of flies, if I remember correctly. Yes. I really wish that they had like a swarm based like spell for them to use. Although you could just mitigate that by being a warlock and getting that cloak of flies thing. Not too, yeah. I or mean, very narrative. I like that. We're just, or I'm just coming up with new stuff. Or you know, be a wizard and uh, be wiz- be a wizard that uh, that's um, that that's that the the bread bar spell is um is um what's that what's that spell um uh, not in fact it's um uh, you create a swarm of bugs or something oh infestation yeah that one yeah I guess that works too huh? next up is uh the uh, uh, the bullet of uh, the, the this this batter this what. I don't know. Um, Dispatcher. Uh, apparently, he's asking for spice and infiltrators. Your dexterity score increased by uh, by one. You know the thaumaturgy cantrip. At third level, you gain disguise self. Uh, at fifth level, you, you, you gain detect thoughts. Can do so. Uh, can do so again uh, until finish long rest. And charisma is, is your is your ability on uh, the spells. Tell Next. Them to be gone. Next is uh, bloodline, uh, the, the, the bloodline of Vierna. Uh, you was, wisdom score increased by one. You know the fiend's cantrip. At third level, you you, uh, you know charm person as a, as a second level spell. And uh, fifth level, you can cast suggestion, and you, you can do so on a, uh, until you finish a long rest, as per usual. And uh, of course, charisma. I'm gonna assume a lot of these are charisma. Probably. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they get charisma bonus. Yeah, they get two. Next up is that the blood of, the, uh, of Glacia. Uh, uh, your dexterity increases by one. You know the minor illusion cantrip. At third level, you, you gain disguise self. At fifth level, you gain invisibility. And I can't, of course, can't do so until you finish long rest. And next is the uh, uh, blood of Vistus. Uh, 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 to go a little off topic though, uh, uh, Tumul of Vistus is, is, is a good, uh, is, the, is like the one of the best oh, uh, oh shit spells. Oh, what's it called? Tumul of Levistus. Does spell call that? Yeah, it's an, uh, it's a reaction spell, but basically it, it gives you an, um, 120 and a uh, uh, temporary HP for one round. And it, it, it basically uh, absorb on, on um, one very big attack for you. But hmm. while you're in the tomb, you're basically incapacitated. Because oh. for flavor-wise, you're basically encased in, in, in a block of ice. Oh. Well, shit. Alright. That still sounds pretty cool, though. Alright, so now your con score is increased by one. Uh, you, you know you know the Ray of Frost cantrip. Um, at third level, you gain Armor of Agathis as, as, as a second level spell. At fifth level, you gain you, you can cast Darkness. And you can't cast these spells again until you finish long rest. Next up is the Blood of uh, Mammon. Your intelligence gets, uh, gets increased by one. And let's see, you gain the Mage Hand cantrip. At third level, you gain Tensor's Floating Disc. And at fifth level, you can cast Arcane Lock. Uh, Charisma again, and you can't do so and finish long rest. The and Blood. Components. And the Bloodline uh, Mephistopheles. Your intelligence gets, gets increased by one, and see you know the mage hand cantrip. At third level, you get burning hands, and as a second level spell, and at fifth level, you gain uh, flame blade. Ooh, 
Is it green flame blade or just flame blade? I like can you imagine that tiefling bard? I cast flame blade. Ding. What? What's your sword then? Zip. <laughs> oh God! No! Why? <laughs> Here I was gonna say that the name Mephistopheles reminds me of the fucking uh, movie Cats, but here you are talking about somebody's flaming sword. <laughs> Does that make it a smoked sausage? Maybe. Now next up is the, the, the bloodline of, uh, of Zario. Uh, okay, your strength, your strength in the score increased by one. You know the Thaumaturgic Cantrip. At third level, you get you get Searing Smite as a second level spell. And at fifth level, you get Branding Smite. Ooh. Oh, okay. Sitting here with the fucking Smite. I think uh, Roy chose this bloodline for his uh, Tiefling Paladin. Probably. I could see him doing that. I'm gonna hit you with my Branding Smite! <laughs> I forgot he, he talked like that for his Tiefling Paladin. Nothing bad ever happens to my party! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Then you get hit with that. Welcome back to the fourth part of this one shot. And so, um, uh, and so, Tiefling variants, and which is uh, again covered in Circles Adventures Guide. Uh, since, since not all Tieflings are, are the blood of uh, As Asmodeus, have traits uh, that, that differ from the player's handbook. The Dungeon Master uh, may prevent the following variants. Uh, although Devil's Tongue, Hellfire, and Winged, uh, Winged are mutually exclusive. Let's see, uh, appearance, feral, devil's tongue, hellfire, and winged. Uh, basically, uh, the, the different traits you get an, uh, as an, uh, your tiefling as well. Like, I, I think I got an, uh, s s barbed hide as one, uh, one of my feats. Oh, yeah, that was your, that was like your racial yeah. uh, trait. Well, it was my trait that I, I, I got, I, I, I put for, for my, my level 4 trait. I got bombed right, and uh, it, it allowed me to actually uh, double my proficiency with intimidation. So I, I had like a, I had like a, a, I think a, a plus, a plus six or a plus thirteen or something. Mm. No, I, I think I have plus eleven. I don't, I don't know. And that's been it for tieflings. Um, we're another twenty minutes. Oh, and, uh, man, a pistol seems pretty cool. And that's that, that's that's only co covering the common races though. Mm -hmm. Like um, we still have to go through the exotic races, the monstrous races, um, the Ebron races, the Ravenloft races, the Ravnica oh. ones, and the Theros ones. Custom lineage is its own uh, section. That's why we couldn't find it. Seriously? Yeah, that's that because it's literally it's it's just you're a humanoid, but you determine what you look like. So. Oh, I'll just cover everything. So uh, this is this is that kind of thing where I was talking with a friend of mine about uh, making a fate touched character that's just uh, I, I believe they're called kinomimis or something. The the people with animal traits like tails and ears and shit. Um, but this one is literally like you can just make them. But so the it, it's still so as builder bear, but with humans humanoids so you can be like oh i'm i my parent was a dragon born and they somehow managed to fornicate with a human and that is how i was born a man with with horns and then his his companions like <laughs> so you, so wait so wait hold on so using this you can make a like a half elf half orc yes but you don't get any of the uh the bonuses from those well, oh. you, you get bonuses, but the thing is, is that they're, like, very base bonuses. It's basically, like, just making variant human, except you also get the ability to see in the dark, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you get one trait of, you, you gain one of the following traits. You can either have dark vision up to 60 feet, or be proficient in one skill of your choice. Alright, so, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so instead of doing that, though, I, I, I'll just assume that this, this is only meant for humans. It's meant for humanoids. It's just the thing is, is that you're kind of stuck with, you know, traits that don't really reflect. Like if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm half tabaxi. It's like, well, you don't really get any tabaxi stuff. So the the best you get is just kind of like reflavoring. It's it. I mean, a lot of people were mad about it when they start when they came out with it because they were just like, this is dumb. And then it, when it actually came out, it's like. This is dumb, but for different reasons. <laughs> I mean, it's dumb. It's dumb if you don't if you don't want to make a um a humanoid non-human. Yeah. 
that's all I'm saying. It's 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 dumb to use this if you're if you're making it a humanoid, not non-human. Which which is you know, and even though it sounds oxymoron, it, it kind of does it though in D and D. Yeah. So well, the thing is, is that you can also be a small human. So if you want to be, if you want to, if you have a love of like really short people, you can be a small. The thing is that you can be small, so you can keep the so, so size of small, but you continue to have thirty feet of movement. Regardless so of whether you, or not you can be like that one guy. The one guy. Um, I forgot his name. Um, he was in Game of Thrones. Tier. Uh, I believe it's Tyrion. I always get him and his dad confused. Yeah, uh, he was names. he was Tyrion and the other those, but I forgot his actual name. Huh? But, but, oh, you, but I, you, yeah, I forgot his name too. But you know what, what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. It's so sure funny though. That, 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 remember when they put him in uh, in uh, in uh, Infinity War? He was like giant as hell. <laughs> he was a gi- oh my god! They pissed he, me off. He was a dwarf, and 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 in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Infinity War. But uh, he was like, you know, on um, but uh, he was like on uh, the MCU on uh, Thor, uh, Thor dwarf. They literally, they were just like, "Hey, I'm watching Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and the fucking Hostel Gato just said something really funny. Let's make that in our in our movie." And they're like, "Okay." Well, so anyway, um, we we have about on uh, uh, fifteen to twenty minutes left. On um, I, I was like, we are gonna make like, like a part two and, and like a part three. We're we're doing your your one shot, but, but, but with this episode. Yep, it's because there's a million races. They can't like I love the ability to have all these options, but if you're the type of person that has to list everything out, it's gonna suck. Oh, um, Edward, here it is, Grung. Where is it at? Um, Monsters Races. Under Goblin. Uh, 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 oh, there it is. Uh, in between Goblin and Hobgoblin. How come they don't have, uh, like, Lakotha or whatever? Uh, they do. It's what under Exotic Races. Under, exotic Ken, races. Uh, under Kenku, oh, above, above Allen. That's weird. Oh. Alright, so, uh, um, should we touch upon the Exotic Races, uh, touch upon the Monsters Races, or should we, like, finish, like, either Ravenloft or Theros? What, you mean, like, right now, or? Like, uh, like for, for, for this, for this, Part one of uh, episode two. Um, I mean, we can do Theros. The, the there's only two, so it shouldn't take too long, and it'll kind of eat up the runtime. So all right then. So okay, so to finish this episode, because uh, we'll, we'll we'll start episode uh, part two of episode two, or shall, shall I call it episode three? Wait, what? Nah, nah, nah. No, because and then I was I was thinking whether or not to actually make the next part called episode three or, or just call it episode two part two. Yeah, I'd, I'd, that sounds like it would be a better idea to do that that way. All right, then so we'll, we'll finish off this part one of episode two. Even though it sounds kind of uh, think because remember and uh, all of this uh, went uh, went over my mind because uh, um I I had the episode in mind with only this then I forgot oh yeah this exists. Yes. All right, so let's start with Leonin, uh, on, on, um, which, uh, which again, the reason why I, I, I bought the, 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 the Theros book, which is, hold on, let me just actually show you what, the, what that looks like. I was going to say it has a lion man on it, but it does not have the lion man on it. It has somebody fighting a hydra, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because it, it's all uh, uh, apparently Roman or Greek related. I mean, they're essentially the same. Like, they're, they're, I, I say this and it's going to cause people to get pissy with me, but they're essentially the same fucking thing. They, they're gods, just named differently. They're the same gods. And here it is. Nemesco Odysseys of Theros. Ah. And so, the, and I, I bought this book because I, I, I saw uh, that, that they're including uh, line people in here, in which and I... Um, and for one of my NPCs, it is uh, actually a Lion Folk, which uh, I I um, replaced the stats for that on uh, homebrew for the actual f- official stats for Leonin. But for now, uh, let's see, let's go look at Leonin. Uh, okay, uh, let's go Island of Theros, and uh, since they're new, like literally new, there's not much on the, on the add, upon, on, uh, 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 add upon it. So... Ability score increase, so you get your constitution score increased by 2, and your strength score increased by 1. Uh, Leonin's mature and age about the same rate as humans. Uh, I, don't know why, I don't know why they add alignment. Um, they tend to be good. Um, their pride then leans towards lawful good, so a lot of times, on, uh, on apparently, Leonin's tend to be lawful stupid. 
Sounds about right. Uh, the little ones are talking about uh, are over six feet tall, slightly over six, seven feet tall, and your size category is medium. Uh, so as long as, long as you don't go, go over seven feet, then your your size category is medium. Uh, speed is the their base walking speed is thirty five feet. They also have dark vision because again, who 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 doesn't? Because they're kitty cats. They go meow meow meow. Uh, naturally, they also have a claw weapon, uh, as natural weapons, and uh, which will make uh, an arm stress with it. Uh, they can deal slashing damage equal to one d four plus your strength your strength modifier. Yeah, I'll play them as a fighter, so or a barbarian. So chances are you're <laughs> or, or a wizard. Or a wizard. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the very weak one. He's the one they kicked over the cliff when he was a baby. Like, like I, I'm not uh, like, like, huh? You're a wizard. You, uh, no, uh, no, you can't get us from here. Yes, I can. Use my mage claw. Wait, what? Did we mage hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> he altered its properties. <laughs> All right. So on um, hunters. Uh, let's see. Uh, hunters instincts. You have proficiency with um, with one of the following skills of your choice: either athletics, intimidation, perception, or survival. And daunting roar. As a bonus action, you can let out an especially menacing, menacing roar. Creatures of your choice within ten feet of you that can hear you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you until the end, uh, end of your next turn. The DC of the save equals eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your con modifier. Once you use this trait, you can use it again to finish a long, short, a short or long rest. Because you need to give your vocal, vocal cords uh, a good rest. Good break. You take a cat nap. Be great. Speaking of vocal cords, uh, now you know you know the voice actor for for Bakugo? For who? For the Japanese vo vo voice actor for Bakugo? Yeah. And uh, and uh, you know he also voiced that one ice guy from uh, from Golden Wind, right? He did. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, um, and um, apparently recently though he had uh, operation on his uh, vocal cords because um, he does the, basically the scream loud for all his roles. Yeah, that'll do it. That's what happened to uh, the Linkin Park singer. They were like, you can never sing like this again or you'll just blow out your vocal cords. And I was like, well shit. Alright. And for languages, you, can, you, you, you know Common and, and, and Leonin. Next, and next up and finally we we reach a touch upon the Seder. Because you know, in a in a in a, Ro in a Roman or Greece uh, setting, there always gonna have to be some, some sort of Seder. Mm -hmm. And my name is Pan, this is my pan flute. Oh, really? Who knew? My name is Pants and this is my pants flute, Zip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's no, no, no. not funny. Don't laugh at that. That's not funny. Oh, no. It caught me off guard. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not. That shouldn't be funny. What do I think? That, that's funny. God damn it. I, I hate myself at times. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Calm down. God damn it. And like Leonin, uh, they, they don't have much uh, because like an um, uh, sub anything or UA anything right now. So let's see, your charisma score increased by two. Uh, your dexterity score increased by one. Uh, Seers mature in age about the same rate as humans. Uh, they let's see alignment. They tend apparently they tend to be an. Uh, Live free of the mantle of law, they gravitate towards being good, but some have devious streaks and enjoy causing dismay. So, I'm saying it's either neutral good or, or, chaotic, or chaotic good. Yep. <laughs> what they don't tell you though, the satyrs in the old mythologies are not only all male, but they're a little rapey. Hmm. Good to know. Uh, see, size, uh, they're about 5 to 6 feet. Uh, they generally have slender builds, and your size is uh, category is medium. Your well, base walking speed is 35, 30, 35 feet. Well, you, you have the hooves. Uh, your creature uh, type is fey rather than humanoid. Nobody tell Danny DeVito that <laughs> satyrs are supposed to be generally slender builds. Wait, what happened? Oh. 
Oh, right. He, he played, played the one. And Philoctetes was a fucking chunk of a man. He was an absolute unit of a satyr. He was, he was literally a ball with legs. Yep. It's all that wine he kept drinking from them horns. I see. So, and, um, uh, one moment. I'll be right back. One day, I want to play a mark of hospitality halfling who just purifies food and then uh, makes it smell like a fart. Just just for shits and giggles. I will cast Liamin's tiny hut indoors <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Nine creatures of medium size are small I can sit in the dome with you. The spell fails if the area includes a larger creature. Or more than nine creatures. <laughs> you just push somebody. You just push somebody. Get out of here. <laughs> you can't come in. I'm back. Um, all right then. So um, okay. So next up, you have um, Ram. You, you use your head and horns to make unarmed attack uh, strikes. When you hit with them, you deal bludgeoning damage equal to one d four plus your strength modifier. You set magical resistance. You have advantage on saving throws against on uh, spells and other magical effects. Oh. Huh. <laughs> so an uh, an omni resistance that, that's actually pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah. It's like I charm you resistance. Um 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 I hold I hold you down resistance. Um. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna stop you right there, bud. Uh, 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 I just sleep. have resistance to pretty much anything that's magical. So um, whatever you're I'll gonna say next, I'm just gonna tell you right now resistance. <laughs> Put you to sleep? What did I just fucking say? You know, actually, a nap sounds good right now. <laughs> he just goes to sleep on his own. <laughs> like, why aren't you put? Why aren't you sleeping? Magical, res magical resistance, son. I have resistance to almost every magical effects. Sleep. What did I just fucking say? As a mirthful release, when you ever make the lo uh, a long or high jump, you can roll d8 add the number to the number of feet you, you cover in when making a standard a standing jump. This extra distance costs movement as normal. Huh. Well, wh wanna watch me jump jump that gorge? Wanna watch me do it again? <laughs> I don't know why, but I immediately imagined good old Duke horse peddler standing there watching me. Yeah, do it, buddy. Do it. Get it. Get it. And then he just jumps the thing. It's like, ha ah. And then he turns to the camera and goes, I'm Duke horse peddler and I'm 50 years young. Woo! And then it just cuts to you. Everybody Let's see. And then you have Reveler. You have proficiency with, with performance and pro proficiency skills. And you have proficiency with one musical instrument of your choice. And... Bagpipes. Or, or pan flute. Bagpipes. Or a path if you want to be boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, but bag play. And you also you know common and Sylvan as your languages, and that's pretty much it. And uh, for part one of it, uh, we'll do part two and three in and um in a, probably in a couple days on uh, to keep it keep it on um going because we still need to cover both classes and also mechanics of battle itself, and also spell casting and spell slots. <sighs> so join us next time for part two of our fifty part. <laughs> 50 part D D 5e tutorial. Oh, no, it's just 50 parts looking at the race. <laughs> like, like, welcome oh. to welcome to part 50 episode two. Like, uh, how many races? How many races did they uh, uh, reveal this time? And word, oh, uh, five more. Okay, good. If each one has like uh, 20 and uh, some races. God damn it! No, we've been doing this for eight years. <laughs> Like I thought they'll be, I'll be, I thought they'll be on sixth, sixth edition by now. I, I think they're doing this, doing this on, 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 on purpose now. Damn it! Like they would want to get rid of their cash cow. Five E's been so great for them. I mean, well, that's true because uh, when you could argue saying like three point five was their was their previous cash cow. It was for as long as it was running. But the thing is, is that. I don't know about you, but there's so many people who have been doing shows based on 5e. Like, even who was, it was like one of the guys that I saw that probably was one of the first ones to start doing a D&D podcast uh, was Acquisitions Incorporated. And they actually, I think they started in 3.5. Um, and then, like, at one point, they just switched all their characters over to 5e. 
They're mm. just like you went to a different world, so now you, you cleric guy, you have to you have to go make nice with the god here that's essentially your god from the other one. And then they started adding in like guest stars like Morgan Webb and uh, the old Spice guy. I think he was in that one. Really? And a wrestler, like a, one of, like some guy that's actually a professional WWE wrestler, played a game with them. I'm just like, what? I mean, celebrities like Vin Diesel don't not, you know, uh, uh, tend to have a kind of very uh, 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 tend to have a, a, a um, unique nerdy side to them. Like for example, again, Vin Diesel, he based off of, of uh, he based off his acting as Riddick, off of his uh, his uh, Drow Rogue. Oh God. I just, I just immediately thought of a character as just a halfling, but it's Vin Diesel, and he's just like, there's nothing more important than family. Family. I don't know about there's a video of like a bunch of uh, Vin Diesel cosplayers and just, uh, just yelling family, family, family. <laughs> it's the, cr it's the critical thing where everybody's pretending to be critical. All right. So anyway, <laughs> that'll be end of part one. We'll, we'll pick up part two, um, possibly with the exotic races. And then follow, follow, follow up by the monster races. Anyway, and uh, you can find me here. Uh, uh, but before we go, Edward, Edward, where can they find you? Twitch.tv slash Emerald Tusk. Still haven't done anything. And on Twitter, at Emerald Tusk. Which I also sort of don't really do anything at the moment. So, yeah. You can find me here at Twitch.tv slash Keshasakura. Find me on YouTube under Keshasakura. Find me on Twitter under Kishan underscore Asakura. Let's support my channel and all my endeavors. Go ahead and click, click on my mask. I'll hold myself very, very much. And let's chat by what I do. Go ahead, please give me a follow. I'm only 10 away from, from my goal. Alright, then. Who can we raid? Probably no one. Yep. Anyway, this guy's coming. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Later.